So in the last video, we learned how to use GPT-40 model in ESP32 by calling their APIs through which we can provide any image URL and can ask any specific questions about it and GPT-40 will get it covered. Well, definitely that's a very unique concept, but in that we do not have any option to click our own images and ask questions about it. So in this video, we're going to try to make that project with the help of ESP32 CAM board. So now let's first discuss how we can achieve our goal. So one of the way is we can click the image using the ESP32 CAM board and later upload it to any of the cloud platform and after uploading we can get the url of that image and finally we can call the chat gpt 40 api by providing that url as we did before so this will of course make our project work but this method has two major issues first being we need to have a third party cloud platform that can be our own website as well where we can upload the images and that is definitely costly and not convenient second issue is here in this method, we first need to click the image, upload it to the cloud, get the URL and later we request the, uh, the API for chat GPT 4.0 and this is definitely time consuming. So even though it works, this is definitely not a relevant solution. So we thought of another way of doing it in which we can click the image using 32 cam board and store that image inside the device and later we can provide that image to the API and later we can get the response from GPT 4.0. Well, if this works, it will be super convenient and cost-effective method. So we started looking over the API docs on the GPT-40 page and found that we do have an option to upload base64 encoded images where they say if you have an image or set of images locally, you can pass those to model in base64 encoded format and they also provide example code for it. Well, this will definitely going to be super helpful for making our project. So now here the first task is we need to click the image from the ESP32 cam and letter encode it in base64 format. So after doing research on internet, we found one library called as base 64.h that's a built-in library in Arduino environment and that will help us to convert the image into base 64 encoded format. And here's the example code that we wrote with the help of the same library that will help us to uh, convert the image captured from the ESP32 cam to base 64 encoded. And now let me explain how this code is working. So first of all, we have tested it in the ESP32 boards package version 3.0.0 and the Arduino ID version is 2.3.2. All the libraries used here are are the built-in libraries no need to change later we have defined the pin according to the esp32 cam board pin configuration later in the setup part we are initializing the camera if everything is good it will initialize successfully and we are just calling a function called as capture and print base 64 image and as the name suggests this function will first of all capture the photo and later it will pass on to the function called as encode which will just encode it directly to the base 64 uh, format and straight away print onto the serial monitor that's a simple code to convert our images and now let's try to upload this code into the esp32 cam board but as we all know 32 cam board doesn't have a built-in programmer so here you can use the external esp32 cam programmer module which is available for sale on our website techesms.com so you can purchase it directly and later we just need to insert the esp32 cam board into the programmer connect the micro usb cable and now we are good to go to program it so now here i'll select the right com port and the board as ai thinker esp32 cam click on ok and let's just straight away hit the upload button okay so the code is successfully uploaded and now we are good to go to test it out so what i'll do right now i have this blue water bottle in my studio so i'll try to click the image of this bottle so let's just open the serial monitor first and here i'll simply press the reset button which will capture the image and here on the serial monitor, as you can see, we got the base 64 encoded image, which is a really long string. So what I'll do, I'll just click uh, here and drag it uh, to the end, press shift and click here. That will select the complete string and I will copy it. Now, let's just verify whether this base 64 encoded image actually uh, perfect or not. For that, what I will do is I'll go to the Postman application and here let's just try to request the API for GPT-40, but this time with the base 64 encoded image. For that, you just need to change the body of the API. So here inside the body, uh, in the URL section, you need to uh, type in this specific format only which is data colon image forward slash jpg semicolon base 64 comma and after the comma you need to provide the complete base 64 encoded image so i'll select here i'll delete this and i will paste 
uh, our own base 64 encoded image and that's it that's the only change or only difference we can say is compared to the previous episode other than that everything is same like the header section is the same the body is the same and here we ask the question like what's this image contains that's the question we'll be asking to the image so now let's click on the send button and let's see okay it says the image shows a blue water bottle with a handle okay with it on a dark background there are some geometric shape on the wall behind it okay and the lightning is dim perfect a blue water bottle uh, with the handle like structure which is not actually a handle and there are some geometry shaped objects on the wall and the lightning is dim perfectly recognized that means we successfully converted the image captured by this into base 64 encoded and that's how we can send the image data to GPT server and can get response on and with this we can be sure that we can click any image through our camera board and can ask any questions that we want and now we are good to go to move on to our final testing so for our final testing we designed a custom PCB with the ESP32 cam on the front and on the back we have an OLED screen with a trigger or a capture button at the bottom corner and uh, along with the ESP32 cam we also attached a buzzer for getting uh, the audio feedback and also we have the TP4056 battery charging module and a GST connector so we can run it on a battery and we can charge it a uh, standalone with the same PCB board so here's the PCB design that we made for our project and if you want the schematic we will definitely provide the schematic down in the description and after uh, designing the complete PCB we later gave its order to PCB go go now PCB go go is one of the largest PCB manufacturer in China and luckily I got a chance to visit their factory last year it is really huge and they are processing around 3,000 orders per day and ordering PCBs online through PCB Go Go is really very simple. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, select the number of PCBs and color masking, and later select the shipping option as per your location. Now here PCB Go Go offers 24 hours PCB manufacturing time without any extra cost if you allow to add the PCB Go Go logo on it, which is really convenient for makers like us. And after that, your design will be reviewed for any error, and later after reviewing, you can pay for your order and get it delivered at your doorsteps. Now the PCB comes safely in a vacuum packaging and the PCB quality feels really premium. Now currently they are having an amazing offer where you can get $25 worth PCB at just a dollar for all the new users and also they are providing free shipping in North America and Europe. So just click the link mentioned in the description and get your PCBs from PCB Go Go. So after getting the PCBs, we gathered all the components required for it and started shouldering them all one by one. And after shouldering all the components, the final project looks like this neat and very compact and with this we are done with the hardware part of the project and now it's the time to write down the final sketch for it and test it in our actual hardware so let me show you the code for that okay so here is the code for esp32 cam image analysis with openai api and the response will be displayed on the oled display and here i have mentioned all the necessary boards package and the uh a library version uh, on which we have tested this code later on let us move on to the library section so here we have used two external libraries one is the adafruit ssd 1306 which is for uh, oled display and one is the arduino json for deserializing, uh, deserializing the response that we are getting moving ahead then here you need to provide the necessary name and password of your wi-fi router as it do require internet connectivity later you need to provide the open ai api key now in case if you don't know how to get one you need to watch out our previous episode whose link is in the description that API key here and later you need to provide the question to be asked about that particular image so I have asked the most generic question like summarize the photo like whatever the image we are clicking uh, we just need to summarize that photo that's what I have asked you can definitely change the question uh, the way you want after that the, here are some configurations and the pin numbers let's just move directly on to the setup part and try to understand how this code works so serial monitor begin Wi-Fi begin pin mode for buzzer and the input trigger button then we are beginning the OLED display and printing all the Wi-Fi connectivity status once it's connected we are initializing the camera and once the camera is initialized it will just print on the display as camera initialized and later it will say press button to capture so now we are good to go to capture the image and later uh, GPT will do its task so now let us go into the loop and let's see what's happening so in the loop we are first of all waiting Till the button is pressed till then it will it won't do anything so as soon as the button is pressed it will print on the display as capturing and the function called as capture and analyze will be called so let's just see what's inside this function so in the capture and analyze image 
uh, as the name suggests first of all it will capture the image if everything goes good it will say image captured and we have a beep sound for audio feedback later after getting the image now we need to convert it into the base 64 format that we already seen in the previous demo code so with the single line we can able to convert that into the base 64 image and later we are providing this base 64 image data into analyze image function so now let's see what's analyze image function all about so here inside the analyze image function we are first of all preparing the url and the payload in the same manner that we have provided here inside the postman application so this is json formatted payload that we are preparing and the most crucial part is the url itself in which we need to write in this particular format only like data image jpeg base 64 comma and letter the base 64 encoded image so that's what we have done here okay and letter providing the base 64 encoded image after that we, we have uh, made the complete payload which contains the model uh, the maximum tokens the a uh, question to be asked which is mentioned here and a letter the actual url which is this after that we are good to go to request this payload and we are doing it with the help of the uh, send post request function and if I let you know what's inside this function then it is all about the HTTP client so we are requesting this link along with these two headers which we have discussed already in the previous episode and after that we are providing the payload and requesting it with the HTTP post request method and once we get the response we are storing it into the result variable so in the result variable we got the raw data uh, from the open AI side which will be in the JSON format which may look something like this this is the complete data that we have stored in the result variable so let's see what we are doing with the result variable next so after requesting the data we are printing the result into the serial monitor that's the raw JSON data and after that we are using the deserialized JSON function because we are just interested in the data stored in the content value pair okay this is the data which is important for us so we are filtering out that data and stored uh, storing it in the response content variable that's a string of course and after that we are printing that response content straight into the overhead display but with the scrolling effect because the display is small uh, and the text we are getting is really long so we are scro scrolling that uh, no text slowly so that we can able to read all the lines we got into the response and once it's displayed once the all all response are displayed successfully it will just say press a button to capture and the loop goes on and on and that was all about our ai image analyzing code using the esp32 cam so now it's time to test it out so first i'll insert the esp32 cam board into our esp cam programmer and connect it with a micro usb cable then here i select the right com port and the board to be selected is ai thinker esp32 cam click on ok and let's just straight away hit the upload button and if you have all the versions same as mentioned here the code will get successfully uploaded without any error so after successfully uploading the code we remove the cam board from the programmer insert it into our pcb project and when we powered it on for the first time we are not getting any response on the display that means the project was not working later we got a suggestion from one of our friend to remove the ground pin connection of the esp32 cam so for that we remove the buck strip and we cut out this ground pin of the ESP32 board and after removing that ground pin when we powered it up it actually worked I'm really not sure what was the actual issue like after removing that extra ground terminal it was started working if you know why this happens well let me know in the comment section along with mentioning the timestamp as well but anyways now as it started working it's the time to click images in the real world and let GPT-40 summarize the image for us Okay, so now let's just try to test this device. I'll power it up and let's see. Connecting to Wi Fi, Wi Fi connected, and uh, camera initialized, checking if everything is okay or not. And everything is okay, it says press uh, button to capture. And I will capture the image of this scenario. Okay, let's just see what uh, AI summarizes for this. So we just need to press this button, and there is a buzzer which says image is captured and now it's processing. And uh, Oh, we got the response. The image depicts an indoor space that appears to be a studio workshop. The room is equipped with various furniture, lighting and equipment. There are sitting areas and the walls have cabinets and storage spaces. The overall color tone of the room is neutral with the blue accent. What a perfect summarization of uh, this space, this image. And it is perfect. This is a studio workshop with a sitting area 
with the light with the neutral colors and the blue tone everything is perfectly summarized by this and the response was pretty fast uh, the latency was really very low let's try to click any other image let's try to click one more image of all this uh, like you to play button and other awards uh, uh, put on my uh, like office uh, cabinet i'll capture it and let's see what uh, response we are getting in the summary the photo shows a display shelf with various awards and a youtube play button the shelf is incorporated into wooden cabinetry and is well lit highlighting the items wow so it recognized the youtube play button and the uh, award trophies so yes that was the response we got now let's try to click the image of our warehouse where we keep all our e-commerce inventory in stock and let's see how ai summarizes uh, this image so i'll press to capture and let's wait for the summary okay so it photo shows a storage room with metal shelves filled with uh, uh, labeled plastic containers the room is well organized with containers stacked neatly on the shelves there is a ceiling fan a wall clock in the background and wow it you know it captures the details as well like the 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 ceiling the uh, the ceiling fan the clock and uh, everything is properly managed so that was the summary we got from this ai camera that we can say from gpt40 so that was all about our compact and portable AI Vision Pro object using which you can click any of the image that you want and let it can ask questions about it. And well, this concept or this project can be used in several different scenarios. Like one of the idea which comes in my mind is uh, we can make a number plate recognition project with this in which we can click the photo of the car and it can fetch out the number plate of the car. And with that, we can make maybe an automatic toll booth system or else we can also make make chalan recognition in which uh, it can let us know whether the car has any pending chalan or not and trust me making the project of number plate recognition was never so simple like you need to develop a machine learning algorithm later you need to train a lot of data to make that algorithm better and better but now you can do all this thing by just requesting one single api thanks to gpt40 so i totally love this concept of using this gpt models in our embedded devices to make some really cool projects and by the way what kind of project ideas comes into your mind after looking over this particular concept well do share your project ideas down in the comments of the video and after a week maybe i'll be selecting one idea out of all the comment section and we'll be giving away this ai vision based project completely free of cost so don't forget to share your creative idea and now let's talk further about what improvements we can make in this project so i particularly find two major issues here first being we are not able to visualize what actually the esp32 cam board is looking over like we need a display kind of a viewfinder which can let us know okay whether the image is dark or light or what uh, things are being captured stuff like that so basically a viewfinder should be there secondly uh, in this model we are able to provide the fixed caution but that should be some option to ask different question about different different images so uh, this two are the scope of improvements in this project so we'll be definitely working on it and you just need to subscribe our channel if you don't want to miss out any of the upcoming interesting projects around this gpt40 series and yeah that being said i am just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video until then explore learn share with me techie sms